Thank you, my friend. My text this morning comes from the 13th chapter of the, of the book of Acts. And Paul's talking about, or St. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, is, is talking about Paul and Barnabas in their first missionary journey. And, and so he writes in the 13th chapter of the book of Acts. He says, among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch were Barnabas and Simeon, also called the black man, Lucius from Cyrene, Manan, the foster brother of King Herod, and Paul. One day, as these men were worshiping and fasting, the, the Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Paul for a special job I have for them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Directed by the Holy Spirit, they went to Seleucia and then sailed for Cyprus. There in the town of Salamis, they, they went to the Jewish synagogue and preached. John Mark went with them as, as their assistant. Afterwards, they preached from, the, from town to town across the entire island until finally they reached Paphos where they met a Jewish sorcerer, a fake prophet named Bar-Jesus. Now Paul and those who and those with him left Paphos by ship for Turkey, landing at the port town of Perga. There John Mark deserted them and returned to Jerusalem. Heavenly Father, there's lots, lots to be gathered from your word in, in every different chapter, in every verse, in every book. And here we come across this passage in the New Testament of folks working at a time not, like, not so unlike this time, folks intent on, on spreading the gospel. Come, Lord Jesus, speak a word to us from this, from this passage that would encourage us to be about the business of following in the shoes of, of St. Paul, letting folks in a, in a desperate and lost world know that there is hope. And that that hope's not found in themselves, it's not found in each other, but it's found alone in you. And it's in your name we do pray it. Amen and, and amen. Our young man was, was down and out. He'd lost all, all faith in himself, had just a little bit of faith left in, in God. He wrote these words. He says, no one, no one pays attention to me or, or what I say, Lord. I'm nobody, I guess. I haven't done anything important or, or made anything or, or won anything. No one listens when I talk. No one asks my opinion. I'm just there, like a window or a chair. Where are all the failures? Where, where, are they, where are they hiding? Where are the people like me? Do you ever fail, Lord? Do you? Do you, know, do you know how I feel? Do you know what it's like when everybody looks at you and says, he's a failure? Friends, I can tell you the Lord does know what failure is. He knows what failure is because he sees it every day in those folks that he has called to serve him. Study your Bibles. As you study your Bibles, you'll, you'll see God's people in their goodness and in their wickedness, in their splendor and in their squalor. You'll see them in their triumphs and in their tragedies. Study your Bibles and, and you'll see that God is always working with imperfect people when he's working with the likes of, of you and me. Martin Luther put it this way. He said, God carves the rotten wood and rides the lame horse. Ever thought of the fact that God's forming and shaping you and he ain't got much to work with? Ever thought of the fact when God's counting on you that in many ways it's like he's riding a lame horse that can only limp along? God's always dealing with imperfect people when he's dealing with folks like you and me. Always, always, always. See? And imperfect people fail. You know what failure is about. It's a, an experience we've all had. 
And because it's such a <clears throat> because it's such a common experience, I want to I want to speak about failure this morning. Speak at it from a direction that might be a little bit different than than what you're familiar with. And as a springboard for my thoughts, I, I want to use one of the more prominent failures in the New Testament. He's a a man named John Mark. John Mark was a, a young fellow. He was raised in a in a Christian family. And he was invited to join Barnabas and Paul on their, on their first missionary journey. They're going to, to Asia Minor to carry the gospel over there. And, and like many of us, people were counting on John Mark when he left with Paul and Barnabas. But also, like many of us, John Mark let them down. But here's the thing. Many of you are here today are, are in the midst of failure. Or you have failed and you're carrying all kind of guilt feelings around with you. I suspect John Mark was that way too. But the thing is that by God's grace, John Mark was restored from ruin to success. From insignificance to significance. Because you are where you are doesn't mean that's where you're supposed to be forever. John Mark was in the pit of despair. Maybe that's where you are this morning. If so, there's a word for you in in this text. Now, the question we want to address is, why did John Mark quit? Now, obviously, we don't know specifically why he he quit on that that journey. We don't know specifically because, because the Bible doesn't tell us. But here's the thing, see. I'm thinking that John Mark was a lot like you and me. And so consequently, we can put ourselves in his shoes and we can think that John Mark probably failed for some of the same reasons we failed. He probably quit on Paul and Barnabas for some of the same reasons that you and I quit and walk away from difficult challenges. So let's look at John Mark. And let's try to answer that question, why did he quit, so that we can get an objective view as to why it is that we shrink before big challenges. And all of us have big challenges. Why do we cut and run? Let's look at why perhaps John Mark did that. Because you and I are John Mark. Well, first, maybe John Mark deserted Paul and Barnabas because, because he had a didn't have any real commitment to the project. Maybe John Mark had been coerced into, into going by, by family and friends, and his heart really wasn't in it. Do you know what I'm talking about? People that want you to do something, and, and you feel guilted into do it. You get into it, but your heart's not there. Maybe that's, where, maybe that's where he was. Paul and Barnabas were on fire for the Lord. Maybe John Mark was just, just lukewarm. Barnabas and Paul were being, were being driven by the Holy Spirit. There was this amazing power behind them. Maybe, maybe John Mark was having to motivate himself. Perhaps John Mark thought that going on this, on this journey with Paul and Barnabas was going to be some kind of glorious adventure. Wonder, wonder, wonder. And he just wasn't, wasn't prepared for the hardships that, that he encountered. See, see, the point is, we don't know why John Mark quit. We just know that he did. And so because he quit, obviously, obviously, he wasn't as committed as Paul and Barnabas were. Second, maybe, maybe John Mark quit because he was immature. Maybe that's what it was. John Mark was a young man when the, when the trip started. And his cousin Barnabas was a major player. But, but as that missionary journey went on, over time, Barnabas kind of faded into the background, and Paul came into the spotlight. Human nature being what it is, John Mark Leonard resented this. See? And then when things didn't go to suit him, he acted like a disgruntled child on the playground. And he took his ball and he went home pouting. You know, one of the sure signs of immaturity is self-centeredness. 
self-centeredness. Are you self-centered? You got a huge old ego. That's a sign that you're immature, not that you're grown up. A sign that you're immature. Maybe John Mark's real motivation in going on the journey was, was he wanted to be somebody. He wanted everybody to look at him. He wanted to be, he wanted to be important. And then when he, when he perceived that, that he wasn't getting any, any glamour out of this at all, maybe he just, he just quit and went home. Third, maybe, maybe John Mark's abandoning Paul and, and Barnabas was prompted by homesickness. Homesickness. Perhaps John Mark missed his bed and his buddies and his mom's cooking. Maybe he realized that every day that he was on that journey with Paul and Barnabas, he was getting farther and farther and farther away from the way things used to be. And as yesterday started looking a whole lot better than, than tomorrow, John Mark got so homesick that he quit. You know, many people these days act like failing is, is no big deal. Failing to meet their, their obligations, you know, they don't think anything about it. They just turn and cut and run and leave other people holding the bag. Ever done that? Anybody ever done it to you? Let me tell you, friends, quitting is always serious business because quitting has repercussions. When you start quitting, you're going to start running from every big challenge that you come into. It will become a habit. It will become your, your way of dealing with difficulties. You'll cut and run. Maybe John Mark had already become accustomed to looking for the easy way out. Maybe when he was growing up, his parents fought all of his battles for him. And, and so, so consequently, words like perseverance,